What's up YouTube? All right, so this is going to be a video about what you need to look out for if you happen to be in the market for a macro lens. Now, a lot of companies, Sigma, Tamron, um, probably Canon, Nikon, everybody, they will market some lenses as being macro, but they're not actually macro. So I'm gonna show you why it's paramount that you look for a one to one macro lens. That is the only real macro lens that you can get um, as a starting base. There are one or two to one and so on, so on. Uh, but most of the macro lenses are not true magnification in regards to life size macro. So I'm gonna show you what that actually looks like. Now keep in mind that on one hand, the IRIX 1 to 1 2.8 150mm macro is on a full frame K1 Mark II. The Sigma 1770 f2.8 to 4 DC <clears throat> macro HSM lens that I'm going to be using is actually on my K3, so it's a cropped image. It still is a massive difference between the two. Technically speaking, because the K3 is cropped, it should actually have a more narrow field of view and it should be slightly more magnified in a matter of speaking, perceptionally, anyway. Um, you know, and the K1 Mark II should actually have a wider field of view because the sensor itself in the K1 Mark II is a lot larger, right? So you've got like K3 and K1. I mean, obviously my finger thing is not to scale, but uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm just going to show you uh, the difference in that, and it's a remarkable difference. So keep that in mind if you are in the market for a macro lens. Let's get right to it. Kabula! Okay, so we're going to start with the comparison of the IRIX 150 one to one, or sorry, f2.8 one to one macro lens. Uh, versus the lens I usually use, which is my Sigma 1770 f2.8-4 to DC macro HSM, which, not sure if you can see that, right here, it does state that it is macro. Um, however, it is a one, uh, where are we here, one to 2.7 macro. So it's not a full macro lens. Um, you know, it's almost full macro. Generally speaking, one to one is macro. So I'm at the minimum focusing distance here. And I'm just going to be taking a shot of that tag on the pillow. And just for measurement purposes, I mean, we're about maybe an inch and a, maybe an inch and a half give or take, away from there. So we're going to take a shot and see what that actually looks like. Okay, a little too close. There we go. So this is the back of my K3. So that is basically the magnification that you would get on a pseudo macro lens. So you've got the tag and then you have some of the area around it. Now I'm going to switch over to the K1 and the IRIX lens, which is a full one to one. And we'll see how much magnification shows up on that. which is going to be a very big difference. And this is a manual focus lens. It is not autofocus. So here's the K1 Mark II and the IRIX lens. Okay. Now, because it's a 150 lens, the actual distance to the subject is going to be a lot greater, um, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people do actually prefer to get longer focal length lenses because it really helps out when you're taking 
shots of, uh, say, insects and things like that. So you're not right where they are. All right, so now that this is set, uh, I'll be right back. Just got to get a memory card formatted in the camera, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so one thing you should always do whenever you get a new camera, do not take your memory card out of the camera you already use and try to use it in the other camera. What you want to do is always, always, always format the memory card in the camera that you're going to be using it in. Oh wow, it's got a nice little transition line in the menu. So the, there actually have been some some nice upgrades since uh, the K3. I'm personally guessing that the KP would be about the same. This is quite interesting. Oh, night vision display. Okay. It's all kinds of stuff. What do we have here? Bulb flash options, flash sync speed. Back to macro. Holy macro. Okay. So, just to show how far of a distance this is going to actually be. I believe this is too close. Yeah. So I'm at the absolute minimum focus distance for this lens. Absolutely. Okay. Now here is where it's going to get crazy interesting. Because this is the actual image. So compared to the K3, the K3's image, let me just get these side by side here. Okay, so there's that, and then let me grab the K3. Okay, so here's the K1 with the Irix one-to-one -one macro lens which you can clearly see is pretty much the whole that here's the tag that's the tag itself so you've got the pretty much the whole tag taking up the entire frame and on the K3 with the 127 macro lens you can see it's a much much wider field of view it's not nearly as magnified as this is huge difference. So that is one of the reasons if you're going to start doing macro or start trying to get into macro, you need to get a one-to-one -one macro lens. There is absolutely no substitute whatsoever. Uh, so I mean that that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, you know, I mean there isn't really much else to say in regards to this. It, it's pretty standard. Um, you know, the longer the focal length as well uh, will actually give you, uh, you know, you, you can be further away from the subject but still achieve that absolute magnification. On the other hand, with a shorter focal length, say 90 or 50 or 35 macro, you need to be right up against uh, your subject. So, yeah, this 150 lens is really nice um, and it's weather. I believe it's weather sealed and it has a, a lot of adjustment in regards to fine-tuning your manual focusing but for a macro lens this is th this is wow and the sharpness and just wow 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 anyway uh, that's pretty much it for this one uh, it's just a in-depth look at why, if you're getting into macro, you should use a one-to-one -one lens. That's all you need to look for. I know they're expensive, but if you're going to take your macro seriously, 
it is seriously something you need to purchase. Nothing else will do. None of the, you know, I know Tamron and Sigma, they, they constantly do the whole, oh, this is a 7300 macro, but it's not. If it's not a one-to-one -one macro, so in other words, if it does not have this one-to-one, -one, it is not a proper macro lens. Even though my Sigma does say macro right there, when you zoom out, it does not actually say one to one. It actually shows one to 2.7. So get yourself a one to one macro lens and you know, when you see those shots of eyeballs on insects and things like that, those are all at least one-to-one -one macro lenses. So that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, if you like the video, leave a like. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave that information at the bottom of the description. If you have any questions and comments, leave them down below. And you guys will see me on my next video. I'm out.